we all float down here. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 need to know it facts. <laughs> You'll never see me. You'll see only what your little mind can allow. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're taking a look at interesting trivia regarding the 2017 movie adaptation of Stephen King's It. Number 10. The teaser trailer broke records. There you go. She's already captain. Thanks, Billy. The anticipation for this film went up like a balloon after audiences got their first look at Pennywise the Clown. So it shouldn't have come as a surprise that people were eager to watch the teaser trailer when it debuted in March 2017. But few could have expected this level of interest. Within its first 24 hours online, the teaser trailer posted to YouTube earned 197 million views, a new record that far surpassed the 139 million views achieved by the old record holder, The Fate of the Furious. This means it also managed to exceed the likes of Beauty and the Beast, Fifty Shades Darker, and Star Wars The Force Awakens. That must have made Pennywise smile. Number 9. Andy Muschietti regularly posted photos on Instagram. As if hype wasn't already through the roof, director Andy Muschietti generated even more buzz for his movie via Instagram. On June 24, 2016, Muschietti posted a photo of red balloons in his office, indicating that pre-production had wrapped up. A couple of days later, he shared a photo of a director's chair, letting his followers know that principal photography had started in Toronto. Since then, Muschietti has regularly released behind-the-scenes pictures showcasing the film's cast, sets, and props, not to mention some haunting concept art. He even uploaded a series of missing person posters featuring children from Derry. Man, this has got to be the creepiest photo album ever. Well, the second creepiest. Ah! I'll kill you all! Number 8. The number 27 has a strange tie to the movie. You're scared of 237, ain't you? You know how the number 237 has a weird connection to Stanley Kubrick's interpretation of The Shining? Well, the number 27 is oddly linked to this Stephen King story. For starters, in the original novel, it's mentioned that Pennywise resurfaces every 27 years. Jonathan Brandis, who played Bill in the 1990 miniseries, tragically committed suicide at age 27. This remake is coming out in 2017, 27 years after its predecessor. Bill Skarsgård, who plays Pennywise in this version, turned 27 one month before the film's release on September 8, 2017. Speaking of which, if you add all the numbers in this release date together, guess what number you get? A coincidence? Eh, probably. Here, take it. Number 7. It was in development for seven years before filming. It's been a long trip to the big screen for this adaptation. The project initially got off the ground in 2009 with director Kerry Fukunaga on board. Best known for his Emmy-winning work on True Detective, Fukunaga remained at the movie's helm until he dropped out in 2015. According to Fukunaga, his exit stemmed from creative differences with New Line. He reportedly wanted to take an unconventional approach to the story and make Pennywise, quote, more than just the clown. While Fukunaga is still getting a screenwriting credit for his contributions, Andres Muschietti of MAMA ultimately took over as the film's director. Shooting finally commenced in 2016, seven years after development started. Number 6. The Bullies Are Much Nicer in Real Life You're dead, fat boy. <laughs> Played by Nicholas Hamilton, Henry Bowers torments the Losers Club, along with his fellow troublemakers, which includes Logan Thompson as Vic Chris, Jake Sim as Belch Huggins, and Owen Teague as Patrick Hockstetter. As sadistic as these bullies can be, the actors portraying them are actually quite friendly behind the scenes. On social media, the Bowers Gang and the Losers Club can be seen palling around in a variety of photos. During an interview, Hamilton noted that it was fun getting to play such a psychotic character. He also thanked his co-stars for being so tolerant, as this role required him to terrorize the hell out of them when the cameras were rolling. Number 5. The Duffer Brothers Almost Directed 
Before Kerry Fukunaga entered the equation, Matt and Ross Duffer asked Warner Brothers about directing an IT movie. The studio turned them down because they reportedly weren't, quote, established filmmakers. As one door closed, however, another opened. The Duffer brothers were subsequently inspired to create the Netflix original series Stranger Things, which shares a few parallels to it. Both take place in a small town, centering on a group of young misfits that encounter a supernatural entity. On top of all that, Finn Wolfhard, who broke out into fame as Mike Wheeler, would go on to land the role of Richie Tozier. How many kids can say they've confronted a killer clown and a demogorgon? Aren't you guys coming in? Uh -uh. It's gray water. What the hell's gray water? It's basically piss and shit, so I'm just telling you. Number four, it could have been rated NC-17. After Kerry Fukunaga left the project, his original script went through some significant rewrites, particularly concerning the sexual content. One notable scene that reportedly didn't make the cut featured Beverly Marsh's father trying to rape her. There were also supposedly scenes where Henry Bowers molests a sheep and masturbates all over a birthday cake. Had these disturbing moments been included, there's little doubt that it would have joined the exclusive NC-17 club. The MPAA might have let the horror, violence, and language slide, but graphic sexual acts tend to push them over the edge, especially when it involves minors. Are you just gonna pretend it isn't happening like everyone else in this town? <laughs> Number three, Bill Skarsgård didn't meet the kids until he appeared on set with them. Although Bill Skarsgård was present for much of this film's production, Andres Muschietti decided to keep him away from the young cast when shooting began. Skarsgård didn't even start filming until about halfway through principal photography. When the kids finally met Skarsgård, it was on set during a scene. The director felt that this would help build a genuine sense of terror. His methods paid off, as the kids were reportedly surprised to discover just how terrifying Skarsgård was. The actor playing seven-year-old Georgie in particular had quite a scare when he saw Pennywise in a storm drain. Of course, after getting past the menacing makeup, the children found that Bill is generally a pretty good guy. Number two, it'll likely have a second part. <laughs> hey, hey, to the Losers Club. All right, to the Losers, the losers, the losers, losers. Club. The IT miniseries was split into two parts, with the first half primarily focusing on the Losers Club as kids, and the second reuniting them as adults. The filmmakers behind the movie have a similar formula in mind. This 2017 movie, alternatively known as IT Part 1, The Losers Club, takes place in 1989 when our young heroes first encounter Pennywise. If the film proves successful, it will likely get a sequel set 30 years down the line. This follow-up would mainly center on the grown-up cast, but still include flashbacks to their childhood. Seeing as how the source material is over 1,000 pages long, we're not sure how they could have squeezed everything into one movie. Number one, it'll be more hardcore than the original miniseries. Kiss me, fat boy. Since the original miniseries was made for network television, it had to tone down some of the more disturbing elements of King's novel. This remake won't shy away from the darker material, though, doing the source material justice with an R rating. The film will reportedly include several subplots that didn't make it into the miniseries, such as Eddie Kasprak meeting the leper and Henry Bauer's relationship with Patrick Hochstetter. Although the violence and sexual undertones are being taken up a notch, the film will still probably draw a line somewhere. For example, it's hard to imagine the book's child orgy scene making the cut. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.